Hi, I'm Wayne and welcome to Bastrow Woodworking. I don't have a project today. Instead, this video is going to be about essential table saw safety. If you've seen any of my previous project videos, you'll know that I have an older model Craftsman 113 table saw. This is an incredibly common table saw, and it's also a lot of woodworkers' first table saw, and there's a few reasons for that. There are a lot of these saws out there, so you can usually get a good deal on them on the secondhand market on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. And to that point, there were so many of these produced that there's still a large aftermarket for both accessories, upgrades, and parts to these machines to keep them going for indefinite amounts of time. These saws were also very well made. Um, if maintained properly, they will run pretty much forever. They have a nice solid cast iron top and the inside is built robust enough that as long as you take care of it and you don't abuse the saw, it's not gonna fail outright. There will be parts that you need to fix, parts you need to replace, bearings that need to be swapped out, but nothing's going to wear away on this saw. Therefore, in this video, I will focus on steps that I take when using a vintage table saw to do so safely. That being said, these tips will apply to any table saw, modern or vintage. As an obvious disclaimer, these are things that I do and rules that I follow that I believe make me a safer table saw operator. No tool is entirely safe to operate and you operate those tools at your own risk. With that being said, Let's get into the rules that I follow and the steps I take when using a table saw. The number one rule when using any tool is to respect the tool because the tool will have no respect for you. Now what does this mean? This means don't be afraid to use the tool, but have a healthy fear of it. The tool can do you great bodily harm if you are not proactive in keeping yourself safe. The table saw is a wonderful and versatile machine, and it is no wonder that it is widely regarded as the heart of any wood shop. It is also, without a doubt, my favorite machine in the wood shop. The next three rules are pretty self-explanatory. If your saw came with a blade guard, use a blade guard. If your saw can accept a riving knife, use a riving knife. If your saw did not come with a blade guard and does not accept a riving knife, use a splitter. Now, this is one of those do as I say, not as I do, because I never use a splitter. But the reason for that is I do a lot of non-through cuts on my table saw, and I would constantly need to remove the splitter to do so. I do so at my own risk. I understand the risks that go into not using a splitter, and I accept those risks. Possibly the most important rule when operating the saw is to always make sure that the fence is parallel to the blade. This is especially important on these older style Craftsman saws. Now I have since upgraded my fence to a Delta T3 um, fence system. So I no longer have this issue, but I operated this saw on its stock fence for about five years. And there are things that you can do to always make sure that you're dialed in in parallel. The main one being, when measuring to the fence, always measure at the front of the blade and the back of the blade. You partially lock the fence down and you basically do the bump to get it so that everything is parallel and then you lock it down. When using the fence of your table saw, make sure that you are pushing your stock not only down onto the table, but into the fence. This will ensure that the edge of your stock rides against the fence and gives you a straight cut. Also know what you're cutting. And by that, I mean, know the history of the piece that you are cutting. Know if it's reclaimed wood, there might be nails in reclaimed wood, or if it's a natural wood, there might even be rock in there. Always lower the blade in between setups. It protects both you and the blade. With the blade beneath the table, you cannot damage it and it cannot damage you. The most obvious rule of using a table saw is to keep your hands away from the blade. To this end, I always keep push sticks on my fence at all times. I always have at least three of them there. And then in the drawers underneath my table saw, I have about three or four push blocks. 
I tend to use a push stick or a push block whenever cutting anything under about seven inches, which is about the span between my thumb and my pinky. Um, on pushing through large stock, I just use a hand, but anything about the smaller than my hand spread out, I will use a push stick. Always use a feather board when ripping thin strips or resawing lumber on the table saw. Do not use a damaged or dull blade. Regularly check your blade to make sure that it is both sharp and it doesn't have any damaged teeth, missing teeth, or dull teeth. In the same vein as keeping your stock pushed against the fence and pushed down to the tabletop is finishing your cut. Continue pushing all the way through the blade. So I'll see a lot of people stop the cut the moment the leading edge of the blade makes it through the stock. That is not the correct time to stop your cut. You need to continue and push the wood off of the end of the saw and either onto your outfeed table or even onto the floor. Never cut rough lumber on a table saw. You'll see me every once in a while use a jointing jig. I would say that's pretty much the only exception because I'm not using the table saw at that point as a table saw, I'm using it as a jointer. You don't wanna cut anything warped or twisted on a table saw because then you cannot maintain downward pressure and pressure to the fence at the same time. It therefore becomes a dangerous cut. When using a table saw, do not wear gloves and don't wear loose sleeves. Anytime you use any power tool, make sure that you are using safety glasses. Never cross cut using the fence. Your board will have a tendency as you go through the cut to want to follow the direction of the blade and that could lead to kickback. The most dangerous thing about kickback with a table saw is that it's trying to pull your hand into the blade as it kicks back. So only use the fence for ripping, use the miter slot and miter gauge for cross cuts. One thing that you can't really learn in a video and only comes with hours on a machine is how to listen to that machine. What's the machine supposed to sound like? What's it supposed to feel like when you're making a cut? Once you have those things down, you start to recognize patterns and you will start to know midway through a cut if something's going wrong and you'll know how to abort that cut. And you'll know to throw your hip into the switch and shut the machine off. The only times I've ever felt in danger when using the saw was when I was asking it to do something it was not capable of. Knowing your machine's limitations is probably the biggest thing you can do in terms of safety, is not pushing the machine further than it is meant to go. Did I miss anything? Is there anything that I should have gone more in depth about? Is there anything that you disagree with? Leave a comment down below with your top safety tips when using a table saw. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with new projects as they are released. And until next time, thank you.